This question might look very similar to the previous example. We've actually got the same substituent, but we end up with quite a different name because of where it's positioned on the parent chain. So the first step in naming this compound is going to be the same as with all of our naming our canes examples. We look for the parent chain first. So let's number from one end of our simplest possibility, which is down here. We've got a nine carbon chain this time. If we number out a different way, so we could number out here, six, seven, eight. That would be eight as well. This one would be seven. So the longest possibility is actually the one that looks simplest, the way we would normally draw this molecule. So let's get rid of these numbers so they don't confuse us. So now we look for where are the substituents? Well, the substituent is at position five, and it's this more complex looking uh, alkyl substituent here. So that's going to take a little bit more effort to name. So how do we go about naming a substituent like that? Well, firstly, we look for the longest chain within that substituent, a bit like treating the substituent like its own alkane. Now we look for the longest chain within that substituent. So let's get rid of that yellow coloring there and number this. We'll do it in blue. So if we number from this end, one, two, three, four, that would be one way to number it. If we number from the other direction, we'd end up with one, two, three, four. And there's no way to get this so that it's longer than a four carbon chain. So it's definitely going to be a butyl substituent of some type. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to number the substituent so that its point of attachment is as low as possible. So if we use the blue numbering, it's going to be attached by its two carbon. So I'll do that in blue, sorry. So it's going to be attached at its two position. But if we use the green numbering, it'll be attached at its three position, which is not as good. So we won't use that one. We'll use the blue numbers. Okay, so now that is going to be a butte. Oh, I'll use blue again. It's going to be a butte and two aisle substituent. And then we look for substituents along that substituent. So does this substituent have substituents on it? Yes, it does. They're at the three position here. Or it is at the three position. And it's just a simple methyl group. So it has a three methyl or methyl group. So this substituent is named a three methyl butan two aisl substituent. Quite a mouthful. We normally put that into brackets so that the numbers associated with that substituent are separated from the numbers associated with the overall molecule or from where it's attached on the parent chain. Okay, so let's go back to our system. We want to now look at the parent chain and do we have we numbered this so that we get the lowest possible number for where that substituent is attached to the parent chain. So let's go back and number this parent chain from this end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So from either end, we end up at the five position is where the substituent is attached. So it's going to be a five substituted and it's a nicarbon chain, so it's a five substituted nonane. So let's just work through that. So we've got the parent name is nonane, a nine carbon hydro, uh, nine carbon um, alkane, and it is substituted at the five position. But we'll put in that substituent first. So it's a three methyl butan to aisle and then that is located at this five position along the chain so it's a five dash three dash methyl butan two aisle nonane quite a mouthful but that is the correct iupac name for this alkane